welcome back again. This is your relationship coach, Angelica, with more insights on how to build solid and fulfilling relationships that enhance your life. If you are new here or you haven't done so yet, please remember to subscribe. But let's get to our topic. We need to stop believing relationship myths in order to have successful relationships. Today, I've put together 10 relationship myths that we have all heard. The biggest myth of all is probably love is all you need to make a relationship last. Every relationship coach and couples therapist will tell you that love is not enough to get you through tough times. Marriages and long-term relationships go through different stages. A relationship usually starts with the so-called honeymoon phase. In that period, couples focus on how much they have in common and how much they love how the other person is. That period will not last. It is not supposed to last. It was simply nature's way to bring you together. And after the honeymoon phase, it is to be expected that you will face challenges. So besides love for each other, you will need the willingness to be reflective about yourself and your partner, your individual histories, and why you both do things the way you do them. You will also need to learn to manage your nervous system. That means being able to self-soothe and ideally also co-regulate with your partner. You will need to know how to do conflict well and reconnect after a disconnect. Relationship myth number two is good relationships don't require work. All relationships without exception require ongoing attention, successful communication, and the willingness to work through issues together. Does that sound hard? It doesn't have to be when you have the attitude that you just want to be curious, curious about each other and how you can grow together as a couple. There's a lot of room for laughter and playfulness in these moments of growth. So doing the relationship work can be a lot of fun. Relationship myth number three sounds something like this. If my partner really loved me, they would. Beliefs that start with, if my partner really loved me, are another trap we fall into. For example, thinking and saying, if they really loved me, they would know what I feel, what I need, what I want. Our partner is not a mind reader. For a successful relationship, we need to learn how to communicate our feelings, our needs, and our dreams. So then instead of complaining after the fact, you can set yourself and your partner up for success by communicating well beforehand what you need, want, or hope for. Relationship myth number four is our marriage or our relationship would be better if my partner changed. First of all, it is completely impossible to change your partner. So if you're putting your energy into trying to change your partner, save that energy, all that will happen is that you will end up in a tug of war. In fact, focusing on how the other person should change keeps you stuck in your problems. Two questions you can ask instead are, how can I change what is required of me to make this relationship better? And second question, how can I accept my spouse the way they are with all their flaws? Relationship myth number five, couples in good marriages or relationships don't argue. Many people still believe that conflict in a relationship, especially when it is loud and passionate, is a bad sign. Relationship scientist and expert Dr. John Gottman has proven that arguments even if the fights and debates are volatile, are not the problem. However, how couples argue can destabilize a relationship. So to repeat, neither anger nor conflict is the problem, but how we do conflict can be an issue. If we allow what Gottman calls the four horsemen to take over our conflicts, our marriage is less likely to last long. The four horsemen are criticism, defensiveness, unwalling, 
and worst of all, contempt. So we need to learn how to deliver and receive criticism successfully, how to argue without defensiveness and stonewalling, and not to express contempt to our partner. To learn more, watch out for a video series I will be posting later this month, which is going to be all about arguments and conflicts and how to do conflicts right, which is the newest book by doctors John and Julie Gottman. All right, we're halfway there. Relationship myth number six. Couples should have sex X number of times per week or month. Do not compare yourself to other couples. Whatever amount of sex both of you feel comfortable having is exactly the right amount for you. People have different desire styles to begin with. And at different times in our marriage, one or both partners desire can be affected by stress or other demands on us, by hormonal challenges or health factors. So Instead of getting too stuck on an average number of sex you should be having, remember that discrepancies are fairly normal and that the desire to be intimate is about making time to connect and be vulnerable. Are you and your spouse doing that? If a couple has a huge discrepancy about how often each partner wants to connect through sex, that is potentially a broader connection issue to work through with a coach or therapist. Relationship myth number seven, true love is passionate. I've seen people leave a good marriage because they felt it lacked passion. And often they found themselves exchanging a stale but calm relationship with one that was more exciting but filled with drama and jealousy because they fell for this myth that true love is possessive and passionate. Love can be both passionate and safe. Ideally, a relationship achieves the right balance between familiarity and newness, safety and excitement. Relationship myth number eight, if we're struggling in our relationship, that means I've made a wrong choice. We should be together. Every couple goes through ups and downs. Every relationship is a dance between connection and disconnection, closeness and distance. And that's the dance we need to navigate. And beliefs like every relationship has a shelf life and ours must be over gets in the way of actually putting in the work which every relationship requires. If you want to find out more about my relationship coach services for individuals and couples, check out the website link in the description box below. I'm happy to jump on a complimentary Zoom consultation with you to see if we are a good match to potentially work together. Relationship myth number nine, sharing my past experiences and wounds with my partner will only make me feel worse. You cannot change your past, but you can change if you're willing to put the work in how you feel about your past and you can heal your childhood wounds and traumas in your grown-up relationship. Speaking about your vulnerabilities and wounds doesn't just allow your spouse to know you better and understand you better, but it could be one answer to healing those experiences. Ideally, the purpose of a marriage is to be a safe space to be vulnerable and to feel truly loved and accepted. And here we are on number 10, the last relationship myth I want to introduce you today. Couples don't need coaching or counseling unless their relationship or marriage is in serious trouble. Seeing a professional is beneficial at any stage of your relationship to help you navigate the life transitions we have. In fact, a fabulous time to come for couples coaching is before you get married to lay a solid foundation for this next step of your relationship. We tend to spend a lot of money on the wedding day to make it a truly beautiful event. As important as creating a memorable event is ensuring that you have learned everything to make your marriage last. So don't wait until your marriage or relationship is in serious trouble. Be smart and come early because, and that brings us back to relationship myth number one, 
love alone is not enough to guarantee the longevity of your marriage. If you found this video informative, please share it with others who could benefit. And as always, please like, leave a comment. I will respond to all comments. And don't forget to click subscribe. See you next time.